Don't make me do it. Ooh. Oh, we're going to break in in water. Are we going to do it? No, no, we're not going to do it. And we already discussed why we're not going to do it. So let's discuss today how we break in our motors, at least here at Holmes Hobbies. So we already had a video where we go over why I don't like the water break in method. And I would like to post face that preface that whichever way it is now that if you have a sealed can motor, and you're willing to at least squirt it out with WD-40 and re-lube with, let's say, three-in-one oil or a zero-weight oil for engines, you could actually do a water break-in. And on a sealed can, it's about the only way to really get it done well. If it's fast and you're racing, okay, maybe. Maybe I'll give you an exemption on that one. But you're going to have to totally clean it out, WD-40, and then re-lube your bearings. So that's where we start. We start with what not to do. On a rebuildable motor like this, which is just a generic one, this could be made into a crawl master or a torque master in our catalog, we never do a water break in, especially not here. And honestly, the brushes are already formed to the face of the commutator in such a way that water break in is completely unnecessary, in my opinion. So, the big question how do we break in our motors? Here at Holmes Hobbies, we have power supplies on the bench, just like this guy. And what we're going to do is we're going to hook it up to the power supply. We're going to run it at three volts for about three minutes. And then what I like to do to seed our brushes is we drive it up to about 12 volts for oh, seconds. 30 seconds is plenty, plenty, plenty. And that really seeds your brushes in that final little amount. So we're going to turn this up. As you can hear, it's running now. We'll turn it up to three volts. And you can hear it's running. You just let it run for three minutes. Let's say, let's say you don't have a power supply at your house though. You have probably a 3S LiPo battery and a motor speed controller. You can give about a quarter throttle, maybe, uh, you know, jam something into your radio or just add a little bit of trim there. I don't know if you can quite get to 25% throttle. It's, you know, that'd be equivalent to about three volts. Either rate, you want to do a very low throttle with no load, not in the vehicle, not hooked up to your drivetrain or anything like that, but a slow, no load break in about three volts for about three minutes. And then, which way? This one's already been broken in, so I can do this. About 12 volts. Watch the amperage there. There we go. So the amperage will actually start to drop a little bit once you bed it in like that at high speed. And then we can go back to our three volts and we will notice, hey, amp draws a little lower. And that's why we do the high speed. And when you've got a hand wound motor, it makes a little bit of difference, you know? And if you were racing, it would make a whole lot of difference. But you know, we're really into crawling these days and honestly, nobody in the racing, unless you're like in some old spec class, nobody's using brush motors anymore. And if you are using brush motors, it's probably going to be like a spec class sealed can at this point as well. So everybody's using essentially the same thing and there's really not much need to do this sort of thing anymore. So Ramsey's the guy that builds all of our brush motors in house and he's going to be doing this for you on every rebuildable style that comes through for us. So all of our experts, all of our pros, the Puller 400s and the 500s, the Magnums, all of those really nice motors, they're already gonna be broken in for you. And they do have brushes, as I said prior, that are already pretty much formed to the face of the commutator. So it doesn't take very long. Again, one more time to recap, three volts for three minutes, and then a little blip for maybe 30 seconds tops at somewhere around 12 volts, whatever you're gonna be running actually is gonna work out the best. So it's a pretty simple process. And if you don't have the power supply, you can just use a low throttle, but again, no load. So take your pinion off if it's already installed in the vehicle and that will make sure that your brushes seat in very well and you don't have any arcing or anything like that. In a crawler, it's not really necessary. And with the serrated brush faces that all modern motors pretty much have, it's not going to make that big of a difference. You're not going to hurt your motor if you don't break it in. And if you buy one from us, it's already going to be broken in if it needs to be. So there you go. Now let's talk a little bit more about the sealed cans though. 
the way that the brushes are formed on these sealed cans, they've got kind of an arc and only the tips of the arc touch. And the last time I talked about this and I didn't know how to show you, but this is actually a really good example of it. This is kind of how the brushes are shaped, except for this is a little more exaggerated. You have these tips that touch your commutator. Ooh, ooh, I have a really good visual example. You have these tips that touch your commutator like this. Let's, uh, let's turn it a little bit. We'll get it there we go right in the camera and at first you've only got those edges on there and so you have to kind of like wear it in until the entire brush face is contacting if you want maximum power definitely something you would want for racing but for crawling the amp draw is so low that you're really not going to see that much of a difference on these sealed cans if you just run it on three volts it might take a half hour it might take almost a full hour to bed these guys in fully and so that's when if you really wanted to seat your brush faces on a sealed can yeah a little bit of water could actually help because it keeps that patina from forming it keeps the lubrication of the brushes from forming and it just eats away the brushes super duper fast and it's kind of hard to see in there I mean, you can kind of see inside to tell whether or not your brushes are fully seated but again, not really, not really something that we're going to recommend. But if you really want to, somewhere around three to five minutes, dunking in the water, running it at a low speed, and then a little blast at your high speed, 12 volts or something like that. And then WD-40, get all that water out. WD stands for water displacement. And then you're going to add a three in one or a zero weight motor oil to your bushing and your bearing. And there you go. It's broken in. I explained that more times than I really needed to, so hopefully you caught all the little details in there. But there you go. If you have any tips or tricks that you used to use during the racing days or that you still use now during the crawling days, the heydays of brush motors are still in crawling, then let me know down below. Maybe you use something like kerosene. Maybe you use something like, uh, I don't know, isopropyl alcohol. There's well, I would say there's really no wrong way to do it, but there's actually a lot of wrong ways to do it. <laughs> so leave your comments down below. Let us know what you've been doing to break in your brush motors. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. You've made it to the end of the video. Hopefully that means you liked what you saw. If you want to help out the channel, you can like, subscribe, and definitely comment down below. We would like to hear new ideas from you, so be sure you let us know what you'd like to see. There are some other suggestions probably floating by my head right now that you can check out. And otherwise, we appreciate your support and your help growing the channel. Treat your motors right. Don't torture in that wet mess. They ain't fragile, but built to last. I confess, just take them for a spin. Let them breathe and run wild. These motors can handle it.